Welcome to People Doing Good for Others. I'm Gary York, and this is People Doing Good for Others, where we honor and praise and celebrate those who truly make significant contributions in our communities. And I'm grateful for this opportunity to be with you today. I want to thank Wilkes Communications, River Street Productions, and 100.9 WIFM for this opportunity, and uh, I'm glad you're with us. Our featured guest today is Dr. Keith Bentley. He's a retired dentist. He's lived most, about all of his life here in Wilkes County. He uh, went to high school here and then went in the Air Force and then to UNC Chapel Hill for his degree and then to the UNC Chapel Hill Dental School. He's a, uh, a tremendous contributor to the quality of life and the values that we enjoy here in the county. So. Uh, good morning to you, my friend. Good morning, it's, Gary. It's an honor to have you here. And thank you. I, I want to thank uh, Dennis Huggins for connecting us. <laughs> and uh, I ran into him this morning. I had a, Arnold Lake, he was sponsoring a Chamber of Commerce breakfast this morning. And yes. uh, Dennis and Jan were there. So we want to thank him for bringing us together. So. Um, Tell us about you growing up on a small farm with an orchard and you, uh, your challenges in life, if you will, back then. Thank you. Uh, I'd be glad to. Uh, I did uh, grow up in a Poor's Knob community of Wilkes County. It's in the southeastern part, uh, just a small community. Uh, focus was primarily on Walnut Grove Baptist Church for our religious and social activities. But I was the sixth of uh, Seven boys on this small farm, primarily uh, growing apples and uh, some small crops. And, but uh, I, I did grow up there and uh, we uh, were not a wealthy family by any means, but we uh, fortunately we had our, uh, where we, we grew most of the things that we ate. And uh, uh, other than salt and sugar and coffee, we grew most of everything we ate, and uh, but it was uh, it was a tough life, and uh, I think uh, it hardened tough me for the road ahead. Right. Uh, we didn't have running water. We had a spring down the hill there, and I it was a looking back, it was a very picturesque scene. But at that time, I did not appreciate that aspect of it. Uh, Doctor Keith Bentley, you. You spoke of um, uh, your aspirations to have an education, and but you knew that it would be uh, you would have to find your way, and so you uh, decided the Air Force with the GI Bill would be a, a likely way for you to uh, to fulfill these aspirations of be an early call into the dentistry. Well, actually, uh, I before. Uh, going in the Air Force, I worked at uh, Lowe's, uh, as Lowe's North Wilkesboro Hardware at that time, yeah. which grew into uh, Lowe's companies of thousands of stores. And this was the only store, it was on C Street in North Wilkesboro. And, uh, but it was uh, really a unique store at that time. Most hardware stores just sold uh, nails and hammers and things of that nature. But Carl Buchan, who was the owner, he had married, uh, uh, where the name Lowe's came from, he had married a Lowe. He married Jim Lowe's sister. And Jim Lowe owned North Wilkesboro Hardware. And Carl Buchan was the most dynamic person before and since I ever ran into. Before and since. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, he was the dynamite. And a dynamo, I guess I should say, and uh, but he, I learned a lot by just listening to him. And uh, but I was uh, 
all set to be a super salesman there at Lowe's. And uh, at that time, June, I think June 15th, 1950, North Korea invaded South Korea. And we instituted the, the draft, and I was, uh, at that time, 20 years old, an able-bodied male, and the recruit, our Air Force recruiter came by the store there and said, your number is gonna be up there in a few days, and said, you can either go in the Army for two years or the Air Force for four years. And so, but I was selling like gangbusters. Uh, he taught you Carl Buck and taught you how to do that? Yes, he did. He did. And, and Hal Church, Hal Church was the store manager. And I, how I uh, came to get to work there, I'd played baseball with Hal Church. And, <laughs> and so that was my only qualifications. I surely didn't know anything about selling hardware. <laughs> and, uh, but they, at that time, Lowe's sold hardware plus doors, windows, roofing, siding, uh, seal attacks, and practically anything, and they, they sold it at a discount price. There was, uh, their motto was Lowe's Low Prices. Lowe's Low Prices. Yes. And you said he would even buy things that come in on the rail from the West Coast? And he, yes. A uh, great promoter, maybe. Yes, he was. He had a vision. Uh, at that time, doors and windows and fr frames uh, were all manufactured locally. And he had this idea of buying the ponderosa pine and fir doors and windows, much less cost than uh, we could buy from local manufacturers. And at, at the time the Korean War started, uh, everybody had the notion that it's going to be the end of like uh, World War II, things would be in short supply. And we would have uh, a carload of doors and we'd sell them before they unloaded them from the railroad track. Wow. <laughs> so uh, you go to dental school or go to UNC an undergraduate yes. and then to de dental school and yes. uh, you'd always had ideas of coming back here and opening a practice. So if you will, just kind of go there for us. Well, I, as you mentioned earlier, uh, I did go in the Air Force and uh, the GI Bill was uh, that was your ticket, right? That was you, my ticket, absolutely. Yeah. Before, I could hardly have enough money to get out of the county. Right. And, uh, but uh, the GI Bill was $110 a month for 36 months. And at that time, tuition was $275 a semester right. at UNC. Right. So, uh, uh, the first day of school, first day of college, I had the vision of being a dentist. And uh, so, uh, and I had uh, the vision of returning to Wilkes County. Yeah. I love Wilkes County. It's a great, uh, people are just wonderful here. Yeah. And still are. So you start your practice and you said that, uh, I think you told me once that you had 4,000 patients. Yes. Wow, in 40 years. Uh, just reflect on that a little bit, if you will, Dr. Bentley. I'll be glad to. Uh, I started upstairs in the Hayes Brothers building. Uh, Kyle Hayes, who owned many buildings and offices, was the landlord and easy to work with. And, but uh, Kyle gave me a word of wisdom that I still have today. Uh, the rent, uh, rental fee was included janitorial service. And so one day I said, Mr. Hayes, I'm not getting much janitorial service here. And he said in his laconic way, he said, well, Dr. Bentley said, if he'd been as smart as you and me, he'd been a dentist or a lawyer. So that is something I've carried with me since. Sometimes when I get impatient with somebody not doing things the way I would like to have it done, I think, well, what Kyle said, remember. All right, let's, uh, during these 40 years you were, uh, significantly involved in the, the foundations and raising money and doing, just talk about some of those uh, uh, giving back moments, if you will, in your career. 
Meeting your wife, that would be a good one too. Let's talk about her a minute. Okay. Uh, well, my wife, as I, I tell her, she was a natural born leader. And, uh, but she uh, was president of the Symphony Guild, the Friends of the Library. She was the second president of Friends of the Library, which today is, uh, I think we're celebrating our 40th year this year. But anyway, she was there and she's uh, women of the church. She her was, name? Uh, Aline Benton. Aline. Aline, yes. Uh, Aline Jones, she was, uh, uh, I can, if I may, I sure. can tell this story. Uh, my granddaughter uh, was here and uh, she, she visited uh, Aline's home and she said, now let's see, she said, Nana lived here and you lived over there on the other hill? And I said, yes. She said, that was very convenient, wasn't it? <laughs> I said, well, since I didn't have a car, it was very convenient. <laughs> so, yes. And, uh, but uh, she's, uh, she's been the wind beneath my wings. And wow. For the oh, what a wonderful time. compliment. Yeah. yeah, she has. And you yeah. have t two children? I have two children. Uh, I have a daughter. Uh, she graduated from UNC Chapel Hill and worked for First Citizens for several years before she and her husband moved to Dallas with the Bank of America. And they've returned to Charlotte and uh, they have a daughter, a granddaughter, I might say, Allison, who works with Wells Fargo in New York City. And I have a son who uh, graduated from North Carolina State and got a master's degree from uh, Appalachian State University. And he's been in the banking business as both uh, in New York, Cleveland, and Charlotte. Your kids' names, let's make sure uh, we... Okay, my daughter is Myra. Myra. And uh, her daughter is, Al her, my granddaughter is Allison. And my son's name is Milton. Milton. And his son is Alex. And Alex is a junior at uh, ECU. And also, uh, he's studying economics. Why? They, none, none of them, Children or grandchildren children chose to grow into dentistry. Okay. They said it's hard work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Keith Bentley, let's talk about the Education Foundation and the start of that and the key players, if you will, when we were able to bring that to, on board. I'll be glad to. That's, that is something I'm most proud of, probably as proud of that, other than the dental clinic, which we may talk about yep. later. Uh, I was on the... Uh, let me go back. Uh, First Citizens Bank opened a bank here, and uh, this was Northwestern Bank territory. And so, but they asked me to be uh, chairman of the local board. And so I accepted that, and they wanted to make a mark in the community. And they, Wayne Duncan, who was the city exec, uh, ran the idea by me, he said, how about a sponsoring a, a softball team? And I said, let's mm -hmm. do something that will last in perpetuity. It will be good for the county. And I said, I owe a lot to my teachers and my education here. I said, let's start an education foundation. I had worked uh, at the dental school. I had worked with a dental foundation. So I was quite wow. aware of what uh, a foundation can do over a period of years. And so Wake County had a... Education Foundation. They were the only county in North Carolina that had an education foundation. And so uh, they said, okay, they agreed, and they sent somebody here to tell us to how help to you get started. Yeah, have, yeah. Really? Yeah, you know, you have to have a, your tax number, and yeah, all, yeah. all the things yeah. that you have to do. And so we, uh, they, they agreed. And so we decided to have a kickoff to raise money because obviously a foundation has to have money. <laughs> and uh, so uh, we contacted uh, local businesses, Lowe's companies, Holly Farms, uh, let's see, Holly Farms and uh, what was The bank? The, yeah, of course, the Northwestern Bank and First Citizens yep. Bank, yep. right. And 10,000 each. And so we will have a kickoff and uh, a uh, little celebration and we contacted uh, one of the local uh, teachers of choir and he agreed to have a choir there for the kickoff and they said well who's going to be the speaker 
Well, Jim Hunt, who's known as the education governor, yep. and he said, uh, oh, he will not come to Wilkes County. <laughs> I said, not unless we ask him. <laughs> and so I knew a local Democrat politician, and I went to him and I said, could you call Jim Hunt? He picks up the phone and says, Jim, <laughs> we need you to come to Wilkes County. And he said, what's for? And he said, it's for Education Foundation. Governor Hunt said, if it's for education, I'll be there. So he was our speaker of our first meeting of the education, Wilkes Education Foundation. Since that time, we have uh, given over uh, $480,000 in many grants. A mini grant is a grant to the teacher that's not uh, awarded by county, federal, or state. So it's an a idea the teacher has that they would like to implement. And I remembered in my early years of grammar school, teachers given maybe for a spelling champion, given a little prize. I never dreamed about that they spent their own money to do that. But, and I never had a chance to thank them, but by this education foundation, I think gives me a chance to thank other teachers. $480,000. In many grants and over $500,000 in scholarships. And we've got over a million dollars in the endowment now. And incidentally, anybody oh my would goodness, like, Dr. Bentley. Anybody would like to contribute to that? We, we accept donations. I today. bet. Way yes. to go. Uh, want to talk about the clinic, health clinic, your okay. dental clinic. Uh, the Wilkes Public Health Dental Clinic. Uh, when I was start, first started my dental practice, there's not a uh, pediatric dentist uh, or children's dentist. And uh, also uh, uh, Medicaid at that time did not pay uh, commensurate with uh, regular fees. Mm -hmm. My overhead was 63% and the Medicaid paid 60% of my regular fee. So obviously uh, I did not see a whole lot of Medicaid patients nor did other dentists. It's very rare that a dentist would do Medicaid. So we, several of us got together and Paul Huger, who was a, uh, a minister in our church, uh, was very aware of obtaining grants. And uh, he knew how to write a grant. <laughs> That's the key. And so we started with one dentist and uh, the dental clinic and uh, a uh, dental office that where a dentist had retired. And today we have a large facility at uh, Public Health Dental Clinic. We have uh, five dentists. We have uh, four on site and one in a mobile clinic that visits all the elementary schools. We talked about um, at length about personal assets, about reputation, having a good name. Uh, having a loving heart. How about just go there for a minute and uh, share your experience and uh, being honorable in our community. Well, I heard a long time ago said, uh, a good name goes with you, a bad name goes ahead of you. But I, that was not anything in my intention of creating a good name. I just like to help people. Uh, and I, I think the, this uh, public health dental clinic, because I, I, my first visit to a dentist was in the sixth grade when a dentist visited our school. So I knew that uh, what important, how important early care of dentistry is. It's just a, it sets a pattern and confidence and esteem. Uh, and it, it did me, when I could see that poor child he had the same smile as the richest kid. That was a reward enough for me. Wow. So you carried that good name uh, forward. Uh, let's talk about being a 55 year uh, teacher at the First Baptist Church, school, uh, Sunday school teacher. Well, I'm not sure why I was selected my first time because I have taught Sunday school for 55 years in First Baptist Church in North Wilkesboro. And I 
did not know much about teaching and whole, not a whole lot about the Bible. So it's been a learning experience for me and uh, we have, uh, I've been in the John Whalen men's Bible class for all those years and uh, I teach uh, one month out of three still and uh, I think I've learned more about religion and the Bible and maybe my... Just this students. week you, you were telling me about you were in Luke. Tell us about yeah. uh, what you, what you do Sunday. Oh yeah, well uh, Luke is one of my favorite Gospels. It probably is my favorite Gospel. I think it's uh, uh, it's very readable and it's uh, it still tells more about Jesus' life I think than any others. But uh, last Sunday's lesson was about Jesus uh, telling his disciples that he's going to be going. And of course, uh, he's, uh, he wants them to understand and he wants them to follow, carry out his work. But I can relate to that as uh, I've seen other people with, uh, when they get ready to retire, they want their work to carry on. And that's, uh, that's uh, which Jesus must have made a very good example because 2,000 years ago and it's still just as Bible as it was then. I see you as, uh, I listened to Charles Stanley's sermon the other night, the other day, and he was talking about developing our lives to where we say to the Lord, send me. You know, I'm, I, I'm prepared to go. Uh, that's, that's what I see in you, Dr. Bentley, about send me, Lord. I, I'm... Uh, I want to be on your team. Just talk about what that means to live a good life and to be ready to send me to help. I uh, feel like, well, let me go back. One time, uh, one of my patients said to me, said, why did you decide to be a dentist? And so I thought it over and he said, uh, well, you can't just decide to be a dentist and be, become one. Said so God has to give you some gifts. Wow. So I think I was not to embellish my story or anything, but I think I was gifted. I had it with my hands and in my heart and in my head to do dentistry. And those 4,000 uh, guests that came to you, you remembered their names. Talk about remembering names. As you came in here today, there's a young man out there doing social media for us. His name's Wesley. And I just spoke at one time and when you walked away, you called him by his first name, Wesley. Well, obviously 4,000, uh, that was the number of patients I had when I finally retired. I started out with probably two a day. But uh, I did, uh, I had uh, a little uh, trick, I guess you'd say. I had these little sticky notes. They're about three by five. And uh, they would tell me, that said, oh, my son is going to be quarterback on the football team. And his name is Jim. So next time I'd see them, well, how's Jim doing playing football? Wow. <laughs> And so, but they did seem like family. Over yeah. the years, I saw the parents, yeah. then I'd see their children, I'd see their grandchildren, and it was like a family to me. Dr. Keith Bentley, you've been involved in numerous fundraising uh, efforts to provide money for those who maybe need a little help. Um, and you talked about keys of believing in a cause and some of the, uh, Share with us, if you will, some of the things that make a good campaign. First of all, you have to be committed. You have to know that the cause is just. That's one thing. I was not a gifted fundraiser, but if the cause is just and you believe in it and you're committed and you participate in that yourself, it is not hard to ask somebody. Because if I believe it's... Uh, for example, for the dental clinic, uh, we raise money for a, a mobile expanded uh, bus that goes to the elementary schools, and we had to raise money for that. So, uh, and every year we uh, 
Can campaign. you continue to, to, to support the clinic? Yes, I'm on their board. I've been on their board probably longer than I need to be. <laughs> but they asked me to stay on there, and I, I worked in the clinic for a number of years, part-time. Uh, most of our dentists come right out of dental school, and they're there for two, three, or four, or five years. And I tried to impart what knowledge I had to make life easier for them. Wow. Uh, somewhat of a new uh, arena in your life, I think, is writing. And yes. I wanted to make sure we just get kind of deep in that today. And, and what, what is it you, this aspiration to be a great writer and, and you're doing it. Uh, let's talk about that. Well, that's easy for me to talk about because I do enjoy writing. And I've written a lot of uh, soliloquies and eulogies and but uh, I wrote about my early life and several things. And uh, this lady had typed them up for me. And she said, uh, uh, you need to call a newspaper. They might be interested in printing that. And I said, no, they would not. She said, well, <laughs> I'm going to call them then. So she did. And the editor and the publisher, Jewel Hubbard, visited me. And he uh, took all my writings. And he has published them in the uh, Journal Patriot. And they uh, primarily, well, there's about a revival, uh, a funeral, uh, December 7th, 1941, uh, the spring where I'm carried water from. So you tell these stories? I'm telling these stories, yes. Wow. I tell, I write it just like I'm telling, you, I'll be telling you. Like you were there, like yes. the revival that you yeah. were in the audience. I was in the audience, yes. Yeah. And I remember very vividly, that was a small country church and Mort Grove Baptist Church. And uh, I remember I was so impressed with uh, some of the ministers. Uh, the one that uh, I was talking about, the funeral I put it, uh, uh, I remember the minister by heart said, crossing the bar. Crossing the bar. Yes. Wow. And uh, I remember another uh, preacher, very eloquent speaker, and he had gray hair like I have today. <laughs> And uh, he said, once my hair was black as a raven's wing. <laughs> I thought, how poetic is that? <laughs> oh, you remember that? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Yes. And, uh, so uh, these, do you receive assignments from, say, the Journal Patriot or people, and then you write it, or how does that go? Well, I had written these mostly for my children and grandchildren to know I had no idea of being published. And uh, oh my goodness, uh, I probably could have done better, but the uh, editor of the Journal Patriot came visited me and looked at them, and he just picked up my collection <laughs> and took them with him. And he's uh, had uh, probably five or six uh, good articles that good have been there. Yes, and you were the uh, Northwest Rotary Club Citizen of the Year, uh, yes. that honor, if you will. I'm a big uh, fan of this. this wonderful, aggressive, uh, benevolent Ruiton Club we have here. Its budget is just profound, I think, is the amount of money they raise every year. Well, the Rotary Club, I think it's just a wonderful organization. I've never belonged. I have, I've belonged to the Optimist Club and other clubs, but uh, this was a great surprise to me they, that they had selected me as their Citizen of the Year and it was a great honor to me. And, uh, but uh, they, uh, they based it on accomplishments and things of uh, the Citizen of the Year Award. So it's, it was a great honor for me to get that. Um, I want to thank Wilkes Communications and River Street Productions and WIFM for having you here today and the opportunity that I have uh, in my career to um, invite wonderful, meaningful guests like you, uh, Dr. Keith Bentley. So, um, I, you just, there was a, a certain comfort and smile on your face when you talked to me about your wife. And I think that'd be a, a good uh, way for us to kind of wind down today is uh, the great partnership you've had and you talked about her contributions. Uh, Talk about your family as we come to an end. Well, my family, we have, I, 
I've, I've written a little about, just one page about, I had a beautiful young daughter and she was uh, uh, captain of cheerleaders and she had a, uh, as a junior, she was a, a cheerleading squad and there was a little bit of uh, uh, gospel, as she said. And she was captain of the cheerleader squad and her first rule was there'd be no gospel in this uh, cheerleading squad. And she left and uh, graduated from high school, graduated from UNC, Chapel Hill, and uh, as in banking, and she had an uh, outstanding career in banking. And she had a wonderful daughter who's a New York and a banker, and uh, Allison. And my son, Milton, was a outstanding basketball player in high school, and uh, he was all conference and captain of the basketball team. And he was uh, offered to be a walk-on at Appalachian State. And we talked it over, and he said, I believe education is probably more important than playing basketball. So he graduated from North Carolina State and uh, got an MBA from Appalachian State University. And he was a senior vice president of the 10th largest bank in the United States, Key Good. Corp. Good. And uh, he had a son, Alex, and Alex is doing very well. He's a junior. At ECU and major in economics. And yeah. So overall, I've been very blessed. We're Played a lot of golf along the way. <laughs> but uh, well, you talked about uh, this community has, had embraced you, that uh, as you gave to it, it, it gave back more every time you did a little something. Just uh, the values of the Wilkes County culture, if you will, and, and how it's been such an important part of your successful career. Gary, I'm glad you mentioned that because I think I've been talking about myself too much and it's about all these things I've done. I could not have done it without all the cooperation and I, people in Wilkes County, they want to help other people. And so it's not difficult. Uh, I've very rarely had anybody to turn me down for something that I wanted them to do. Yeah. So I, I, I want to give people that help me yeah. uh, along the way and uh, for any, anything that I've done, I want to, other people deserve credit, particularly as you mentioned, my wife. And uh, let's revisit the Hall of Fame just a minute and that night and that 400 people there. Uh, I think that'd be a, a nice tribute to the community. Those, I think it's the most unique Hall of Fame of all of them I know because uh, we're not just talking about athletes, we're talking about quality of life, people that, that have made the significant difference. Uh, talk to that just a moment, if you will. Well, I've, uh, I'm very humble that I was selected to the Wilkes County Hall of Fame. People that, when I grew up, I admired so much and still admire what they've done. Uh, Fred Lovett and uh, Leonard Herring and so many on there that uh, I thought maybe they ought to have an A and a B team <laughs> <laughs> on that. <laughs> but anyway, it was a great honor and it was a great evening. And uh, my daughter and uh, my minister uh, told us some, their, some things about me. Yeah. And uh, I was. Uh, uh, that, my picture is at, at the Stone Center right now, and I sometimes I'm, well, I look there, maybe that's not my picture. <laughs> oh, it is. And I want to again thank you for being here today and for Dennis Huggins is another hero here in this community, Dennis and he Huggins. sent me a note and said, uh, you need to connect with uh, Dr. Keith Bentley and, and have him on People Doing Good for Others. So you've honored us in so many special ways today, and. Uh, uh, you're a great friend, and I, I really appreciate you being here with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Keith Bentley has been a guest on People Doing Good for Others today, sharing his experience and his strength and hope and his values and his appreciation for Wilkes County and the wonderful people that serve here. A person with a significant servant's heart, uh, family values, and please commit to being with us in our next show. Again, I'm Gary York, and this is People Doing Good for Others. 
until we can meet again, that uh, life will be rewarding. The more we put in it, the more it comes back to us. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.